hello out there welcome to this tutorial on probability in this video we'll be looking at combination of events meanwhile check the description section of this video on our youtube channel to get the links to other videos on probability first we look at mutually exclusive events two events e1 and e2 are said to be mutually exclusive if they cannot occur simultaneously so by set notation we said e1 intersection e2 is an empty set then probability of e1 intersection e2 is equal to zero and note that intersection means and as well as union means or We'll be making use of this as time goes on in the video now addition law if event e1 e2 e3 up till en are mutually exclusive the probability of e1 or e2 or e3 or en happening is the sum of their respective probabilities that is probability of e1 or e2 or e3 or en is probability of e1 plus probability of e2 plus probability of e3 up till probability of en if events e1 and e2 are not mutually exclusive the probability of e1 or e2 happening is given as that is probability of e1 union e2 that is e1 or e2 is equal to probability of e1 plus probability of e2 minus probability of e1 intersection e2 and that is it so we now go ahead to solve some solved examples example one a bag contains seven red five black and four yellow marbles a marble is picked at random find the probability of picking a a red or black b a yellow or a black marble so we look at the solution of this bringing out what we are given there we have a uh, seven red marbles five black marbles and four yellow marbles and the total is 16 that is 7 plus 5 gives 12 12 plus 4 gives 16 so the probability of picking red or black is going to be probability of picking red plus probability of picking black so the probability of picking red is 7 over 16 since there are seven red marbles there plus probability of picking black since there are five black marbles there so we have five over 16 and simplifying this since the denominators are the same so we just add the numerator thereby giving us 12 over 16 and in the simplest form 4 divides both 12 and 16 to give us a 3 over 4 as our final answer. Then we go to problem B. Probability of picking a yellow or a black marble. So that's going to give us probability of picking yellow plus probability of picking black. And the probability of picking yellow is 4 over 16 plus probability of picking black marble 5 over 16. Again, we just add the numerators that gives 9 over 16. And that is already in the simplest form, which gives the final answer to example 1b. And that's the end of solution to example 1. We go to example 2. In a rule of a fair dice, find the probability of obtaining A, a 3 or a 5, B, a 1, 
or a2 or a4 c a prime or a6 d a perfect square or a factor of 6 so we start the solution uh, the sample space here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 since a fair dice has 6 faces numbered 1, 2, 6. So the n of s is 6. So starting from a part of the problem, probability of obtaining a 3 or a 5 is equal to probability of obtaining a 3 plus probability of obtaining a 5. The probability of obtaining a 3 is 1 over 6. Since in a single roll of a fair dice, there's only one 3 there, then plus probability of picking a 5 is also 1 over 5. Simplifying this, I have 2 over 6. And 2 over 6 in the simplest form is 1 over 3. And that's the end of solution to 2a and uh, for 2b we are looking for probability of obtaining a 1 or a 2 or a 4 which is probability of obtaining a 1 plus probability of obtaining a 2 plus probability of obtaining a 4 and the probability of obtaining a 1 is 1 over 6 plus probability of obtaining a 2 is also 1 over 6 plus probability of obtaining a 4, 1 over 6. And uh, simplifying this, we have 3 over 6. We have a final answer as 1 over 2. We are done with example 2b. For problem 2c, we have to find the probability of obtaining a prime or a 6. So we are going to create a subset of S which is a set of prime numbers between 1 and 6 they are 2, 3 and 5 and N of P is 3 it should be noted that the intersection of this set 2, 3, 5 with 6 is an empty set therefore the probability of obtaining a prime or a 6 will be probability of a prime plus probability of a 6 since their intersection is an empty set. So if the intersection is not an empty set, we use the other relation. And the probability of obtaining a prime here is 3 over 6 plus the probability of obtaining a 6 is 1 over 6. So simplifying 3 over 6 plus 1 over 6, we have it as 3 plus 1, which gives a 4 over 6. And in the simplest form, we have it as 2 over 3, since 2 divides both 4 and 6 to give 2 and 3 respectively. So we are done with problem 2C. We go to 2D. For problem 2D, we are looking for the probability of obtaining a perfect square or a factor of 6. So we are going to create two subsets. That is a perfect square, which is set of 1 and 4. And the n of p of the perfect square is 2. So the other set is factor of 6. That's f6. That's going to be 1, 2, 3 and uh, 6 and n of f of 6 is 4. Now before we go further we need to verify whether the factor of 6 is intersecting with perfect square. So that is p of s intersection f6 will give us a 1 since 1 is a perfect square and at the same time is a factor of 6. So that n of ps intersection f6 gives a 1. So the probability of obtaining a perfect square or a factor of 6 will be probability of ps plus probability of f6 
minus probability of PS intersection F6. So substituting this, probability of perfect square is 2 over 6 plus probability of factor of 6 is 4 over 6 then minus probability of PS intersection F6 is 1 over 6. So that simplifying this, since we have a common denominators, so we now have a 2 plus 4, which gives 6 minus 1, and that gives 5 over 6, which is the end of solution to problem 2. And uh, we go to problem 3. Example 3, in the diagram, the spinner is likely to land on any of the numbers indicated. We have a uh, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Find the probability that the spinner lands on A, an odd number, B, a multiple of 4, C, an odd number, or a multiple of 4. So what we do here is we start from A part of the problem, the probability that the spinner lands on odd number we need to identify the odd numbers there so we have one as odd number three five seven and nine so one two three four five we have five odd numbers there so the probability that the spinner lands on odd number will be five over ten this is simplified as one over two and that's the end of solution to problem 3a now we go to b part of the problem the probability that the spinner lands on a multiple of 4 a multiple of 4 is a number divisible by 4 so there we have a 4 and a 8 so the probability that the spinner lands on multiple of 4 will be 2 over 10 and that gives 1 over 5. Now the C part of the problem. The probability that the spinner lands on an odd number or a multiple of 4 will be sum of A and B. And that will give us a 5 over 10 plus 2 over 10. I decided to use these raw values for easy manipulation. And simplifying this, we have it as 7 over 10. And that is the end of the solution to example 3. And this is where we are drawing the cutting for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get links to other videos on probability. Until we come your way again, goodbye.